<laughs> it's a good community we live in. <laughs> Lots to do today. It's my first really mobile day. I went to work. I'm ready to go. Let's do this. Um. Jeez. So obviously I did not curse. I just thought that would be a fun intro. It's a way of life here. You have no choice when you live in this environment, you have to keep going no matter what. I'm just gonna show you really quickly while I let my car warm up, and I need to brush it off too, um, what the view is from the bottom of the driveway, and actually where I fell, which caused this uh, fun time. Where everything comes down from that hill, from this little patch right here, all of it comes down. This is the driveway and under about half of this is all ice. That's the walkway. No matter how hard we try, we cannot keep it free from ice. I actually fell, let me hobble over here, right around here. This is the most dangerous area actually, um, and I was careless. And it, it's, as you can see, that's all, that's all snow right there. And when it warms up, it melts almost every day. A little bit of it melts, it goes down at night, it freezes, and we're constantly battling it. All right, hi guys, Rochelle Hickok here with the Hickok Homestead. First off, I would like to announce our special winner of the giveaway for yesterday, um, the last video. It was for a Clyde's slide chart calendar. Um, and the special winner is Catherine. I will get in touch with you and I'll get your address. Your, your snail mail address, and I will send it to you. Yay, congrats, Catherine. You're gonna enjoy this. I'm curious to see how it works in Florida. So you'll have to keep me updated on that. As we're having um, an interview with my neighbor, Liz, but instead of me interviewing her, she's going to be interviewing me. Um, no joke, we just got up, put on our PJs, and uh, are enjoying coffee, and she's She's videotaping me. Grab, so, your, grab your coffee mug. Oh, yep. Gotta, gotta have... It's a Charlie mug. Oh. It's the Charlie mug. Oh, oh. There we go. There we go. Okay, so yes. it sucks to be injured. What ha how, how does it happen? What effect did it have on your homesteading? <laughs> um, so, yes, it stinks to be injured. Uh, for those that don't know, I sprained my ankle on Sunday. I slipped on ice. I have a second-degree sprain. It hurts a lot, um, and I, I was recliner bound <laughs> uh, for a couple days because of it. I couldn't put any pressure on it, um, and then I was put in a boot, which is so attractive um, <laughs> and, and so functional. Um, I wasn't able to work, I wasn't able to take care of the chickens, I wasn't able to feed the cats, I couldn't do anything around the house, not even chores for quite a few days, and it had been building up and all those things needed to be done too, of course. That's always how it works. I'm very grateful for the people that were around to help out. And that's really, when you have animals and when you have a, a lot of things that you have to take care of, it's wonderful to have people you can rely on that you know can help you and that you would do the same thing for them in regard. You know, it's a it's a whole community. So I was very fortunate. I had Mitch. Thank you, Mitch. Uh, he had a lot to do. He had to work full time and then he also had to take care of all the animals and s some of the housework. <laughs> My neighbor Liz, I mean, she who is interviewing me currently yeah <laughs> i didn't do anything yeah she just saved me from the bottom of the driveway oh, i forgot yeah. yeah 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 but i mean you offer continually to go ahead and and take care of our animals and um oh what well, always was bringing me over food or trying to bring oh and wine she always brought me over a glass of wine <laughs> and heard me just let, like checked in on me it was wonderful <laughs> Uh, so when you started going out to the coop yourself, um, what made that 
Did, what was that like? What's that? <laughs> um, challenging. Um, well, f first off, there's still ice on the ground. There's still snow on the ground, so you can't really see where the ice is. The first time I went out, um, I had no, well, I wanted to do it. I really wanted to do it because I knew I could do it and I, I had, I missed seeing my girls, you know? I'm much more manageable. I can hold it with one hand. That way the chickens are getting their food and I get to see them. Now, I don't want you guys being scared about me doing this. I want you to know I am being practical. I am being efficient. I have my crutch, which I don't know if I'm going to be able to use or not. I'm wearing my boot so it's nice and secure and safe. And I'm wearing my actual work boots and a crampon with spikes that my dad got me. Um, also, so it is, I am being safe. I am being practical. I am not being careless. And I had my crutch and I quickly realized how much of a hindrance my crutch actually was. Um, and I, you know, went out to take care of um, the chickens. So it was uh, slow, slow. Uh, it's nothing but ice back there, so I had to be very, very careful. Did you slip? No. All right. Good. I did not. I was very, very careful. Well, I mean, my crutch slipped, and that's when I realized that I'm like, this is not gonna work. <laughs> it needs like a spike right through it for it to work back there. So, um, and today uh, I am going to be with Mitch's help probably. I'm going, he's going to probably bring out the shavings and the straw for me and I'm going to finally do their, clean up their, do another layer of, for their coop and their run because it's bad. It was supposed to get done on Sunday when I fell. Um, if you, uh, after you had your accident, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> after you had your accident, what did you do? Uh, between then and now that you might do differently. Is there anything that you learned about how caring for yourself or you know Responsibilities being sent elsewhere, you know um I wish I wouldn't uh, put off so many things so that way Because I was down for a few days where I couldn't do anything um, Laundry needed to be done uh, dishes were piled up um, I didn't go grocery shopping, so we didn't have any groceries in the house. Um, it was just because I was so busy with so many things, I put off these things. And now I wish I wouldn't have um, because it kind of stressed me out. In all honesty, I'm sitting in the chair and I want, I see all this stuff that I needed to vacuum, I needed to sweep, I needed, I, everything needed to be done. And, uh, the house was a pit and that Sunday and Monday I was planning on cleaning everything and doing the chicken coop and doing everything and that's when the accident happened um so I think that's one thing you know don't put off the small stuff you know that needs to get done around your house um because if something happens and you can't do physically can't do some things um you don't want to be stressed out by that or Put it on someone else to do it too. That's another thing. Mitch had to do a whole bunch of laundry. The thing I, I think is very important is when you do get injured um, or you get set back in your journey of some sort, because I was doing good. I was losing weight. I was in a nice rhythm of everything um, for the most part, except for housework. Um, <laughs> um, if you get set back by something, don't give up. Don't just sit there and be stagnant. You know, putting it. I didn't stop. I didn't say, well, I can't do it. I'm not gonna do it. I have. A oh well. You know, um, I as soon as I could. I, I every day I tried a little more. I tried to heal myself a little more. Um, as soon as I could. I went driving by myself, figured out a way where I could drive. It was my right foot that got hurt. I can't press the pedals <laughs> without certain things. So, um, can't do it in a boot. Um, so I figured out how to drive. I figured out how to take care of 
myself and my family and the ones that are around me once again in my own special way uh, but with their support too which I think is the most important thing um all right spotty would you like to say something spotty. Kitty, kitty. is there something you would like to contribute to? you look very pretty up there honey what's happening up okay there? so now let's talk a little bit about how the homesteading project is going overall and what you see in the future um that's a good question it's going okay um we are uh it, it seems to be um an interesting topic of what classifies you as a homestead um and uh i consider us a homestead in not the tra traditional regard we are a residential homestead i guess is a good way of putting it uh, we have a community we live near the city we have restrictions we rent and so we do what we can within the limitations that we have to live a more natural and contented life i think is a good way of putting it um, so that's our definition of homesteading and i think everyone on the property would consider that as well um, so we have the chickens. The chickens are doing good. They're getting antsy. We got eight to nine eggs. We're getting eight to nine eggs now. Nice. Um, Mom, you were right. The, the second is when they start popping them out again. Um, <laughs> she had this theory that she heard that it, on February 2nd, that's when the egg production goes up again. <laughs> and she was right. Um, so the eggs are doing really, I mean, the chickens are doing really well. Their egg production is going up again. We have a lot of buyers for them, which is nice. Um, they really want to go out, but it's covered in snow and they won't go out in the snow. Um, the foxes seem to be gone, which is nice. Um, the garden is percolating. Um, I'm excited. I'm ready for the garden. I want it to go. Um, we have figured out some spots where we can put some little hidden gems in, in the property. It's not the most conducive environment for a garden, uh, this property, but we're making it work with, with what we can do. Um, we're going to use some of the compost this year, excited. We're going to be putting in some elderberry bushes this year. Really, really, I'm excited about that. I'm ready to start making our own elderberry, you know syrup and wine <laughs> and <Sweet>. stuff <laughs> yeah. um i'm curious to see how the grapes do this year too um right on the deck oh oh yeah okay i'm thinking yeah. with the this will be yeah. their second year oh so great. we'll yeah. see how it goes yeah um i think we'd like to put in some more um berry bushes too we have the three blueberries um we're going to be expanding the herb garden, the area above the garden this year. So maybe we could put in some uh, berries up there. That would be nice. So yeah, it's going well. Good. I uh, wish we could do more, but um, the future. Um, so this is not our, for Mitch and I, as much as we love our neighbors and everything, obviously, <clears throat> This is not our permanent ideal ideal location. Uh, for one thing, we'd like to own our own property. And we would, I would love, well, Mitch too, I would be doing the majority of all the work and everything. Um, but uh, in terms of taking care of things, Mitch builds, I take care. Um, and we would like our own little, little house. We'd like our own little cabin. We'd like all of our own animals. Um, I would like uh, one or two little jerseys for milk and get our own, you know, raw milk. Maybe a goat. We'll see. Uh, a couple of goats. Uh, more chickens. Oh my goodness, I'd love to have more chickens. Um, some broilers, too, would be nice. Uh, pigs. I'd love pigs. Um, not too, mu too much, you know. Uh, probably not horses. We would never be fully off the grid. That's one thing. We'll Why? never be off grid. How come? Um, it's not conducive with our lifestyle. Mm -hmm. I think what we would like to do is make it so if something did happen, if we lose power, um, 
if, if things did happen around us where all of a sudden we were somewhat isolated and living on our own, um, we would survive. But all around, um, we, we, Mitch for one, he works, he needs internet for work. He's an IT guy, he's a, he's a computer guy by and by. So he would go absolutely crazy if, if he lost that. He would hate, he would never be happy living that way. Um, and me personally, I have family 3,000 miles away. I like to be able to see them. I like to stay in touch. Um, and so I don't think we'd ever be fully off grid, but I think we would like to make it where we could be more functional just on our own, if that makes sense. Modern homesteading, not rough and tumble homesteading. <laughs> yeah, that's great, modern homesteading. Um, <clears throat> now, Let's see. All right, so here's the damage. It's starting to bruise around here now, and it hurts around here now more too. Um, but the real damage is on the other side. The back of my ankle obviously is still swollen, mm. right through here. Wow. Um, yeah. It's... Sorry. Out. Out. Okay, so here's the other side. Wow. This is the real damaged area. I'm um, sorry about the hair, but yeah, this is where the primary amount of pain is. And up and down, mm. right through here. Mm. Um, not too much bruising up my calf, but it does hurt up my calf. And uh, yeah, it's really swollen, really bad. Shoot. Thank you, Liz, so much for um, for interviewing me, I guess, uh, and providing coffee for my numb brain. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good community we live in. <laughs> All right, thanks, guys. Have a good one. As always, if you enjoyed this, hit like, subscribe, and share. And I will be talking to you again later this week.